Hi, this is Dror Mshakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Tell you something that I learned. There is a, there is something in this creation that is called Midat Adin, the Midah, the attribute of judgments. Now that's the power of trial. It's the power of justice. And and it's coming down to the world when the truth and the honor of those ones that are holding the truth means the Creator and His loyal ones when their honor is been disgraced been violated so then that judgment, that midah of judgments, is furious, is angry, and it's like an arrow that has been shot already from 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 the bow, and like it, it, it's gonna execute. It's like it's it's gonna finish its job. It's like you can't stop it anymore. It's, it's, it's already there. Go try to run after that bullet that you just shot. It's like... <laughs> you're not going to make it, buddy. Sorry, it went. Now... The issue with Midat Adin is very painful, very hard for us to, to deal with. Because Rashi, that he was, it been said on him that he was the brother of the Torah. He was, his understanding was so great in the will of Hashem, that he was like a brother to the wisdom. Like he knew everything about his sister. He knew, like he felt the Torah's real intention, the real way that the Creator is revealing His wisdom through the Torah, and not like other people that misinterpret many verses, many chapters, many, many sections in the Torah, and, and because of that, deliver the wrong message to the people, to the world. Now Rashi, this holy person, this holy righteous man, he said, in one of his explanations on Midat Adin, on judgment, that really in Midat Adin, really in that place of judgments, now, before we're going to explain, we must say that the world is not built only from judgments. If the world would be built only <coughs> with judgments, the world will be destroyed. The, the world cannot exist when there are only judgments. Why? Because Rashi explained to us that from the side of Midat Adin, from side of judgments, from the place that they are really coming out to the world, from their pure intention of respecting the truth, respecting the Creator, with all the power, with all, like, for completely. So if a person even once in his life violated the will of heaven, did something like a tiny thing, like tiny thing against the will of Hashem, Rashi is saying on that, Mina Raui Shiyamut. So he should die. Like from side of judgments, no one can make it. Because the verse is saying, There is no righteous man that will be so complete that will do only good and will never sin. It's, it, it does not exist. So, if it does not exist in the world of the righteous ones, so what are we going to say? Like, for sure, like, we're messing up, we're failing on daily basis, we can like, 
me myself, like I, I know about myself that I can fail hundreds and thousands of times a day. Like you can fail in your thought, you can fail in your eyes, you can fail in your mouth, you can fail with your with your behavior, you can fail with your manners, you can like you can fail and fail and fail, you can fail in one sentence thousands of times. If someone heard something wrong from you and that person will go and tell that thing to others, like <laughs> there's no end to your failure. It's like it's 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 a snowball that, that like let's hope it's gonna crash fast and, and, and no one will be hurt. Like you don't know what you can cause there was a story on a person that came to the rabbi and told him, I want to receive from you something to fix my sin of Lashon Ara. I was talking bad things on people and I want to fix it. So please give me an advice. What can I do to fix Lashon Ara? So the rabbi told him, okay, take a, take a huge bag, a large bag, fill it with feathers, put many feathers in it and go and throw the feathers around the town in the streets. And then come back to me. So that guy went and bought that sack and went and threw away the feathers. They already start spreading with the wind. And he came back to the rabbi and then he said to the rabbi, Okay, I did what you asked me to. Now what should I do? So he told him, Now go collect them. <laughs> okay. Like, there are some situations in life that you're just like stuck with that. Like, so now, what's the tikkun? What, that Rebbe just like was la making fun of him, was laughing at him? No, he wanted to explain to him that like, there's nothing to do. If you killed someone, so like he's dead. Now you want to go and save other people, other people? Okay, so it's great. So go, do it. But the man that you killed died already. So there are certain things that from the side of judgments, from the trial side, from, from justice side, you can't pay for those things. Like, there's nothing to do. Like, you should die. Like, exactly what you did, you should die. But, the issue is that the Creator, He involved, He brought into the world, into this creation, also the attribute of mercy, of, of kindness. Now, what does mercy means, what does kindness means, that this is a certain grace that is being served to those ones that are not worthy to enjoy from it. It's not a reward on your good actions, oh you were so pure, you act so nicely, so now you will be judged in grace, no. Grace is when we know exactly that you messed up and you're not worthy for, for no like mercy at all. But because that the Creator is merciful, He's the Father of mercy. And because that He has mercy on His creations and He knows their inclination, He understands that they are limited and that they have their weaknesses. So for that the Creator decided to <coughs> reveal that Midah that attribute of His kindness on those ones that are not worthy to enjoy from it even. Also this situation is very problematic because who are those ones that that attribute of justice should go all the way with them and execute <coughs> them and break them to pieces and to revenge on the sorrow that they cause to others and who are those ones that should enjoy the mercy? We cannot know. We can never know. Only the Creator Himself, He can look into the inner rooms of our spirits and to judge you based on the real truth of who you were in those situations that you sinned, that you messed up. If in those moments you were a real liar, if in those moments you were really a filthy and evil person, you enjoy destroying people, you really loved it, you received a satisfaction from causing that damage. So in a situation like that, a person cannot be spared, a person cannot enjoy mercy. But when the Creator sees that the person fell in a certain trap and the evil inclination failed him to fall into that 
attribute of that negative attribute to sin and to violate the commandments and to go against the right way of the land and to misbehave but he failed and fell into that place not because that it was a complete violation of the will of heaven he was not going all the way against heaven he was not an evil corrupt person that wants to damage just unfortunately he found himself rolling because of his weaknesses because of his fears because of his doubts because of his weaknesses because of his lack of stability because that he failed so many times but the Creator finds a point of good in that person he <coughs> finds a way to judge him favorably so then the Creator is involving is bringing into the picture the Midah of mercy of Rachamim of kindness <coughs> A student of mine asked me a very important question and he asked how can I know what the real will of Hashem is how can I really know if Hashem wants me to convert or not if Hashem wants me to learn another couple of hours or not if Hashem wants me to take that job or not how can I know the simple answer is you cannot know you can never know because Hashem in a general way the creator of the world is still hiding his face from us even though that once in a while we are able to recognize and to see some signs we are able to recognize some of his guidings because we are sometimes aware to his individual private supervision on us that he is sending messages that he is hinting that he is opening certain cracks in the in the darkness of the world and once in a while we can feel something, we can hear an inner voice or something that is pulling us to a certain positive direction and we can feel some guidings, but not always. And sometimes you have mixed voices inside your mind. You have certain reasons to do and you have certain reasons not to do. You feel that some verses supporting your way and your method and some verses contradict your way and you, are, you can find yourself lost. And even if you go and consult with people, sometimes you can find yourself that two big people, two important people, even righteous people, will give you a different and contradicting opinion about your question. And again, you're lost in an intersection with no answer. I came to that very deep understanding, and I think that it's the only way that a person can really find... Um, an answer to that question. How I'm really going to know what the Creator wants from me. The Creator gave to every one of us an inner tool, a certain sense to the truth, an ability to recognize the truth inside of yourself. Like I said many times, if someone now asks you a question, do you have tea in your cup, you know the truth. If in that cup there is tea or just boiled water or maybe coffee, you know the truth about that cup. You know the truth. You can choose what to answer. Yes, no, I don't know. Like you can choose if to say the truth or to lie. You can choose. You have the free choice in your hand. But all that decision using your free choice will come only after you will sense and feel the truth about that question that you just been asked. If someone will ask you, do you love me? If someone going to ask you, do you want to do that? If someone will ask you, do, have you prayed? Did you do that? Did you listen to what I said? Are you, do you care about what I'm thinking right now? That question, in the moment that it hits home, when it's getting into your mind, in that moment, you yourself, you know what the truth about this question. You know about yourself if you heard, if you haven't, if you want it, if you haven't, if you love, if you hate, if you do, if you don't. You know the truth about yourself. Now, we know that the Creator is the Father 
of mercy. He is the God of truth. Hashem Elokechem Emet. He's teaching us always to walk with truth, never to lie. And also to be truthful in an awkward situation that we already lied. He taught us that we should learn how to do tshuva, how to admit in our mistakes, and how to take responsibility and to try to fix all of our lies and all of our failures, and to try to do the best connecting ourselves or reconnecting ourselves back to the truth, to the real truth. And that's his main will. First of all, he wants people of truth. Before you're able to do great things, before you're able to finish some, so many books, before you're able to wake up early in the morning, before and before you donate millions of dollars to charity, before all those amazing things that you wish to achieve in your lifetime, before all of that, the Creator wants us all to be people of truth. Because without that, even if you're going to be the best liar in the world, you don't have a share in any connection and any attachment to the Creator. Because His seal is the seal of truth. And a person that is lying cannot be in one side with the Creator, no matter which lie he will lie, no matter how holy he will pretend to be, no matter which claims he will present. As long as he's a liar, he can lie to himself. He can lie to people, but the Creator already left him. The cult, the group of liars cannot accept the face of Shekhinah. Kat shakarim einam mekablim pene Shekhinah. They cannot. Dover shakarim, a liar, cannot stand in front of his eyes. Those are verses that nothing can change. They're stronger than iron, they're stronger than rules of nature. You can't bend them. No matter who you are, if you're the chief rabbi of the county, you can't bend that verse. If you just lied, you just messed up and you brought darkness on your life and Hashem is not shining on that spot until you will do tshuva and you will say the truth. Yes, I lied. For an example, we have a story on Rabbi Meir Balanes. Rabbi Meir Balanes, we, no one can understand who Rabbi Meir Balanes was, how holy he was, how righteous he was. One time he went to visit a friend of his, I think it was Rabbi Yuda, if I'm not wrong, he went to visit his friend every year in the same period of time. He would come to Rabbi Yuda's town and Rabbi Yuda was hosting him. He had a very nice family, very nice wife, she was righteous. And Rabbi Meir came and they were supposed to host him. He didn't know, there was no WhatsApp, no emails in those days. He didn't know what happened, that the first wife of Rabbi Meir Balanes, of Rabbi Yuda, passed away, she died. And he got married again. And when Rabbi Yuda came, so Rabbi Yuda asked him, why are you standing outside? Please come in. He said, I'm sorry, I didn't know, I wasn't sure. Rabbi Meir is acting perfectly. Everything is good, he's righteous, he's modest, he's guarding himself, everything is good. Rabbi Meir went into the house with Rabbi Yuda. At night, Rabbi Meir Balanes drank way too much wine. While he was asleep, that woman came into his room. And while he was asleep, she spent the night with him. He was not aware to what that happened. This is what the Gemara is telling us. You can say, no, I don't believe it. You, whatever you want to say, whatever you want to think, you can think. The Gemara is saying, Rabbi Meir Balanes lo yada kuma. He didn't have a clue what happened, what took place in that night. He was so totally drunk and tired, exhausted from the way. The Gemara is testifying on him. He didn't have a clue what happened that night. In the next morning, he woke up, he went down, to eat breakfast, to drink something, this woman starts flirting with him, talking to him. And he tells her, listen, like, what are you doing? And she told him, last night you were much nicer to me. And, she's, and Rabbi Meir is telling her, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking. Again, we are talking about Rabbi Meir Balanes. Yes, yes, we are. And she told him, I'll give you an evidence that you spent the night with me. 
and she started telling him things about his body, certain signs, certain points, certain scars, I don't know, marks that he has under his clothing that gave him the proof that she is right, that at night she was with him and he was without his clothes. First thing that Rabbi Meir Balanes did was to run outside to the street and start screaming all over the place. Rabbi Meir Balanes was with Rabbi Yuda's wife. Rabbi Meir Balanes sinned. Rabbi Meir Balanes was with a married woman. Rabbi Meir Balanes cheated her husband. And all the students seeing Rabbi Meir Balanes running like crazy in the streets, screaming to everyone. And they told him, stop him. Hey, Rabbi Meir, what are you talking about? What happened? Tell us the truth. Tell us what happened. He's screaming to everyone. That's the truth. That's what I did. I sinned. I failed. I cheated. I lied. And they told him, listen. Like, how did it happen? Tell us the story. And he said, I drank wine and I went to the room and she came. And, I, and so they told him, okay. So now you're telling us that you were drunk. So if you were drunk and what that you're saying is the truth and they're trying to, you know, to, to shush this story, to make it quiet, disappear, like in every very nice Orthodox community, like things you not talk about, like... I once um, heard a story on a child, he was maybe 12 years old, and he was molesting children. For sure he was a victim before. But that is what that he was doing. And that situation been caught. And people like were talking to him. And one of the people asked him, why, why, what have you done? Like, what happened? What have you done? So he said, I touched in the place that we're not talking about. Instead of saying, I touched the place that, let's say, we're not touching or we're not supposed to touch, he touched the place that we're not talking about. This is a very clear sign for a very huge mistake. Something is very wrong with that attitude. Things that we're not talking about. We should talk about every single thing. We need to open every wound and every disease and to heal it and to take full responsibility and to fix it. So they tried to come to Rabbi Meir Balanes and to tell him, listen, Rabbi Yuda will forgive you, will take you to court and everything will be okay, don't worry, it's not your fault. It's a new wife, no one knew her, she just came, like it's, it's, it will be okay. He said, listen, if I'm not going to judge myself, they're going to judge me in heaven. I'm not going to wait for heaven's judgment. I'm going to judge myself. I know what I've done. I know the failure that came through me. And I'm going to confess on that. He was not trying to please people. He didn't care that people will continue respecting him, honoring him. That was the greatness of Rabbi Meir Balanes. Every person in this world can fail. King David failed. Abram failed. Moses failed. Jacob failed. Isaac failed. The Holy Mothers, they failed. Everyone with their failure, they failed. And the greatness of the Torah is that it's rebuking every single one of us till the end. <coughs> Revealing the truth. Because the lie is floating above the water and reveal its stink. You cannot stay a liar. The holiness and the purity, the pure fire of the Torah will not let you hold your lies inside. And to imagine to yourself that you can hide them forever. To think that the Creator is a thief like you, is a liar like you to cooperate with you. Because you're too scared to deal with the truth. The only way that we have to redeem and to save ourselves, to protect ourselves from real judgments that are attacking us in life, is to do tshuva, is to admit the truth, 
even when it hurts, even when it's embarrassing, when you will recognize the truth inside of yourself, and that's how we're coming back to the answer of that question. How will I know if I'm choosing by the will of heaven, if I should take that job, if I shouldn't take that job, if I should get married, shouldn't get married, should learn more a couple of hours or should close the book one hour earlier? How am I going to know? The Creator gave us all that inner sense to feel and sense the truth. And you cannot avoid that truth. You can lie to people. You can make up excuses until you'll forget where they started and to think to yourself that all is good and whatever, you made it and you lied and you sneaked outside and no one noticed. But the Creator lives inside your kidneys. He listens to the voice of your heart. He remembers all the things that you forgot. The picture is open and all your words and all our talks and all of our thoughts and all of our feelings and emotions and all of our pressure and fears and our stress, everything is written. Now it sounds like a horrible thing, oh wow, so like I'm, I'm, the, I'm, 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 I'm done, like I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna get it. You're gonna get it if you're not gonna do tshuva. And it's not a threat, it's an opportunity. And I'm telling you that because I am dealing with my own opportunity to do tshuva in life. The only reason why people listen to me in this lifetime, in different lifetimes, maybe I was a very good liar. In this generation, I like, I'm, I'm, I'm always being caught when I try to lie. So I, I decided to drop that. I realized it's not my profession. I'm not good at that. It doesn't work for me. Didn't brought me anything good. So I quit. And, uh, and I'm trying in my own life to take responsibility. And I see that the only people that really have the ability to keep on holding on and to keep on listening to my classes and to follow my, that message are honest people that are really desiring the truth. Those ones that are not, like, they're disappearing after two months, after three months, after like one year of showing off, yeah, I'm listening to all your classes, whatever, suddenly they, they find the, their escape way, they're running in the escape stairs, disappearing from the emergency door. Oh, never been there before. If you want the truth, the truth is a very deep thing. If your heart desires the truth, you need to take responsibility on the truth. And you should deal with it all the way, and not to be scared. <coughs> now, the amazing thing with the Creator is that really there is no attribute of truth, an attribute of kindness. It's, you are not in a system. You're not in the army. It's not the <laughs> army now. You're going to be judged on your sin. It's not the police and the government. It's, it's not like that in, in, in kingship of heaven. In kingship of heaven, the real truth is that all the wide world, with all of the creations in it, in and out, there is no one except of Him. There is no one except of Hashem. So even when He is judging you in a certain situation, he is dressing himself in that situation and bringing his real will in front of your eyes to deal with. And that person that stands in front of you, he is not your enemy that came. It's not your executor. It's not someone that came to kill you. It's someone that came to teach you that you must surrender before it's going to be too late. That you should surrender to kingship of heaven. That you should stop violating the rules that are separating you from His loving kindness. That you should stop blocking the light of heaven, the godly light of heaven, from you and from your beloved ones by running away from your fears by falling again and again over and over in the trap of the evil inclination that is 
that is trying to um, to uh, to 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 offer you better ways than the truth that tries to fail you in foreign ways that are not by the will of heaven <laughs> trying to make you be under so much pressure that you will come to that conclusion that this time you must deny the truth that that time you have to lie that in this situation you have to sin that in that problem you have to take a different way and Hashem won't help you with it and you must do something else something foreign something wrong all those advice of the evil inclination are only coming to the person as an option but the free choice is always in your hand it's written on Cain that after that Cain brought the sacrifice and his sacrifice been rejected by heaven so he fell to horrible <laughs> sadness it's written on him by Plupanav his face fell his face were not like they were before. He was sad. He was angry. And Hashem came to him and revealed Himself to him in a prophecy. And told him, Lama charalach? Why are you angry? Hashem is talking to him after that Hashem rejected his offering, rejected his, his gift. And He's telling him, listen, I rejected you for a reason. Why are you angry? Imtetiv, if you're going to fix your ways, if you will become a better person, if you're going to learn the lesson, there's a lesson here. I rejected you for a reason. Listen carefully. If you're going to fix your way, set, you will rise. You will climb back. Im love, and if not, la feta chatat rovetz. If you will decide not to fix your ways, the sin going to become like a dog sleeping on the entrance of your house, always there, an opportunity. Whenever you'll open the door, he will sneak in. He will not attack you. He will attack you only if you'll open the door for him. The sin will lie and will wait over there for an opportunity that will be the result of your decision not to <laughs> fix your ways. But if you'll choose to fix your ways, you will rise. Your offer will be accepted. You will be welcomed back. Everything will be perfect. And it's written on that sin, and that sin will have a desire to fail you. He will want to see you fall. But, Hashem told Cain, But you will have the power to control him. Even though that he will be there. Even though that he will offer you opportunities. He will knock on your door. He will give you second ways. He will give you third ways. He will give you many options. Still you will have the control on him. What's the control? What's the way to control your evil inclination? If you will choose to fix your ways. And if not, he's there to open an another opportunity. A darker way, a dark path to fail in and to fall into. The Creator is dressing Himself ill also in the difficulties, also in the judgments, also in the problems that we have in life. That we will learn from those difficulties that came to us how to fix our way. And there is always a way to fix to say what that Cain said, Cain after murdered his brother Hevel. Hashem asked him, where is Hevel your brother? Cain told him, I don't know, am I my brother's keeper? Hashem told him, what are you saying? I hear the voice of the blood of your brother calling me from the ground. And then Hashem rebuked him and told him the punishment that he deserves that was not even 1% of what that he did, that what that he caused. 
but still Hashem revealed His mercy on him and told him, I'm going to punish you in this way. What's Cain's answer? What kind? That sinner. What's his answer? Gadol avonim in so. I cannot carry my sin. My sin is too heavy for me to carry. Again, he is walking in that pattern to remove the responsibility. Like you just killed your brother now, even to pay 1% of what you've done. You're not willing to, like nothing. What do you want? To be rewarded on killing your brother? No, it's too heavy. I sinned, I failed. It's an attitude. It's a pattern. It's a manner. It's a way of behavior. It's not the truth. Your sin is not too heavy to carry, even if you did something much worse than that. If you will do tshuva, and you will accept on yourself to fix, the Creator will open for you a real path to fix. He will reveal His loving kindness on you, and will share that attribute of kindness, of mercy, into the attribute of judgments, and will mix them together, and the water will suddenly be just warm and not as hot as they were before. And suddenly you're going to realize that those water, all their purpose was only to wash you, and to purify you, and to heal you, and to support you, and to deliver you to your real destiny that it's to become a real Baal Tshuva, a person that is really able to connect himself to Hashem, no matter how wrong he was. King David failed in things that we cannot understand, but the merit that was standing for him was his ability to admit, yes, I was wrong. If he would deny, he wouldn't be no one. No one would remember his name today. He would be erased from the Bible. If he wouldn't be a man of tshuva, a man of truth that was able to admit and to confess and to accept on himself the responsibility of his mistake, there would be no leftover from him, no memory. Only when he admitted, only when he was strong and powerful enough to say, yes, I failed, yes, I was wrong, then he's been chosen to be our eternal King, our Mashiach, the one that will deliver the redemption, the complete, complete salvation, only when you are able to say the whole truth, to admit in your lousy condition, to be honest enough to say, yes, I failed, yes, I messed up, I disappointed you, I hurt you, I disrespected you, I took advantage of you. Only when you will say those words, they will be heard. Before you will say them, they cannot be heard. Even if you think them in your mouth, they won't be heard. You need to say, you need to express your regret in your mouth. If it's your regret on your own deeds, if it's your regret on actions that you affected people in a negative way with, if those are things that you committed against heaven that you want to apologize to Hashem. The way of tshuva is like that the Rambam is teaching us that the person should express his sorrow and to explain his regret to heaven. If you stole in 10 cents, you should say, I was stealing 10 cents. I remember, I took those 10 cents. It was me. I did it. If you won't do it and you're just going to try, yeah, you know, everyone is doing some stuff, like, it's not your way out. Oh, actually, it is your way out. <laughs> it's not your way in. You're not coming back in. You're already out when you decided to lie. In the moment that you lied, you were already out. Now you have an opportunity to come back in. The only way back in is with the truth. The truth is the only way to set you free from your own fears, from those shadows that are attacking you, from your craziness and from your anxieties and from your depression. People are scared because they sinned. 
The people of Zion lived in, in fear because they sinned. If they wouldn't sin, they wouldn't be afraid at all. The reason that you're afraid is because the judgment's been woke up, woken up on you. Why they woke up? Because you did something against Hashem. Because you brought darkness to an illuminating world. Because you did something wrong, you chose to lie. And when you will choose to remove that lie, and to fix, and to take responsibility, so your worst enemy will become to be your best friend, will open the gates of tshuva for you, and will guide you in the path of truth, and will allow you to come back in, into the zone of purity and holiness. <coughs> I think that oh, that that we that that we miss something in in the meaning of the word tshuva. Tshuva, it's the meaning of the word tshuva is there are two meanings to the word tshuva. One is an answer. You have an answer to all your questions, and the second explanation of the word tshuva is. To come back. Now the Zohar Kadosh, the book that had been written by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and his students, is explaining that tshuva, the meaning of the word tshuva, that it means to come back to somewhere. So it's to come back to the place that you were at before. Before the sin you were close to Hashem. Now because of sinning you have been drifted somewhere else. To the dark side. Now by doing tshuva, you're coming back to stand close to Hashem. The real way and the only way to come back to Hashem is to understand that it is inside of you. Like I explained just now. You cannot know if Hashem wants you to do tshuva on right or on left. You can never tell those things. Oh, Hashem wants me to do tshuva on not learning enough. How can I know if that's really what Hashem wants me to do tshuva on? Maybe Hashem wants me to do thing, tshuva on things that I did in front of my children, in front of my wife, in front of, like, how can I know? You should ask yourself. You should go back to that place that you were at. You should go back to your own sins, to those moments that over there you lied to yourself, that over there you were there and you sinned. You should go back to that place and over there you should confess. Over there you should accept on yourself the real yoke of heaven. Over there in that place that you know that you've been there, that in that place you removed from yourself the light of heaven and you chose the dark side with lust and desires following the advice of the evil inclination and in that spot that you were there you should do tshuva, you should come back to your true self, to the light of your soul. To respect people, never to hurt people, to stop lying, to stop making up excuses on your weaknesses. Yeah. It's deep and very deep. It's deep and it's very, very flat at the same time. It's very, very simple. Like, it sounds deep, but it's in your mouth and in your heart to do. It's in your hands. Like, it's deep. Okay. So, so, our, so our conscience is basically can, a, secular, a secular way of looking at our, 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 our I believe that you understand it correctly. Thank you very much. Be blessed. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.